Hello learners, we welcome you to extraction of aluminium metal. We begin with the ores of aluminium. Chief ore being bauxite, that is hydrated aluminium oxide. Other ores include mica, corundum, and china clay. We now proceed to the extraction process. And it is worth noting that our chief ore will have the following impurities. We have iron 2 oxide in our ore as an impurity, iron 3 oxide and silicon 4 oxide which is commonly referred to as silica. So the ore is first ground into a powder then we heat it to about 160 degrees Celsius. This very fast procedure ensures that the water of crystallization, remember our chief ore is hydrated aluminium oxide. So we will remove the water of crystallization and the same procedure converts our first impurity which is ion 2 oxide into ion 3 oxide. After this has been done, the ore is concentrated through chemical separation, where we dissolve it in hot concentrated sodium hydroxide solution. So here, aluminium oxide having lost its water of crystallization as indicated in the first procedure, being amphoteric will dissolve in our alkali to form sodium aluminate. Silicon 4 oxide is acidic, will also dissolve to form sodium silicate. So let us go ahead and write the equations for the two reactions beginning with aluminium oxide having lost the water of crystallization in the heating process so this will react with sodium hydroxide and of course there's some water to form the sodium aluminate sodium aluminate with that formula. Our product is aqueous because it will dissolve in the alkali. To balance, there's a 2 on sodium hydroxide, a 3 on water, and a 2 on sodium aluminate. When it comes to silicon 4 oxide, the reaction will be as follows. Silicon 4 oxide reacting with sodium hydroxide and we form sodium silicate, of course, together with some water. Sodium silicate will be aqueous and water is a liquid. We shall balance with a 2 on sodium hydroxide. Now, the other impurity, which is ion 3 oxide, it is basic and therefore will not react with our sodium hydroxide. So it remains as a suspension and can be filtered out in form of red mud. After filtering out ion 3 oxide, our filtrate will now contain the sodium aluminate and sodium silicate. Now, aluminium hydroxide will be obtained from our filtrate through two ways. The first way is that we bubble carbon 4 oxide and when we do this, we precipitate 
aluminum hydroxide and that would leave only sodium silicate in solution. Let's, Let's have a look at an equation that represents the reaction. So our filtrate will have a mixture of sodium aluminate and sodium silicate. So when we bubble carbon 4 oxide, the aluminum hydroxide is going to be precipitated from our sodium aluminate using the equation below. So this will give aluminum hydroxide and of course sodium hydroxide. We don't need to balance that. It comes out very, very well. Now, the second method is to precipitate aluminum hydroxide through seeding, where we use freshly prepared aluminum hydroxide. So the equation will be as follows. We have that. And then we introduce freshly prepared aluminum hydroxide. This procedure is called seeding. So we shall have aluminum hydroxide coming out and of course some hydroxide ions as well. Let's now look at how to obtain aluminum oxide from the aluminum hydroxide having been precipitated from sodium aluminate. We roast it to obtain aluminum oxide. Now the equation for the reaction would be as follows. Aluminum hydroxide residue being heated to about 1000 degrees Celsius will be decomposed to aluminum oxide and water or steam. Balancing with a 3 on water and a 2 on aluminium hydroxide. Now moving forward, to get now aluminium metal from the oxide, we do electrolysis of our molten aluminium oxide. Of course the oxide is dissolved in cryolite. Cryolite is simply sodium hexafluoroaluminate with the formula NA3ALF6. We do this to reduce the melting point of aluminium oxide from 2015 degrees Celsius to about 800 degrees Celsius. The reason as to why we do this is to make the process more economical. The electrolysis is done in what we call Hall's cell. Dear learners, let's now have a look at the components of the Hall's cell. So here we have a diagrammatic representation of the Hall cell. The cell is a cylindrical steel tank here that is lined on the inside with graphite. This would act as the cathode. Now, at cathode, aluminum ions are discharged in molten state due to high temperatures. So we know our electrolyte being molten aluminum oxide will only have two ions. That is aluminum ions and oxide ions. At cathode, we discharge aluminum ions to form aluminum metal in molten state due to high temperatures. Now, the equation for the discharge of aluminum ions would be aluminum ions in liquid state accepting three moles of electrons and we get aluminium metal in liquid state. Now, candidates, 
cryolite that we use to lower the melting point of our electrolyte remember introduces sodium ions in the electrolyte so why do we discharge aluminum ions and not sodium ions the reasons are two one aluminum ions are in higher concentration than sodium ions in our electrolyte two aluminum ions are lower than sodium ions in the electrochemical series, meaning they have a higher tendency to be discharged. Now, once we obtain this aluminum, we realize it is denser than the mixture of cryolite and molten aluminum oxide. It will therefore sink to the bottom of the cell and we shall periodically tap it off the tank and cool it into a solid. Moving to anode, the anode consists of several graphite rods as shown here. And here we shall discharge oxide ions to form oxygen gas. The representation of discharge of oxide ions will be as follows. Oxide ions, of course, in liquid state, will form oxygen gas with the loss of 4 moles of electrons because we need to balance with a 2 on the oxide ion. Dear candidate, I know some publications multiply equation 1 by 4 and equation 2 by 3. So that we have 4 moles of aluminum ions accepting 12 moles of electrons to give 4 moles of aluminum. And then for the anode, we shall have 6 moles of oxide ions producing 3 moles of oxygen gas and 12 moles of electrons. That is done purposefully so that we balance the number of moles of electrons. But, candidates, when we are asked the equation for the discharge at cathode and anode, it is always good or it is always allowed to give the equations in the simplest ratio. And that is exactly what we have done. Now, I want us to go back to this equation at anode. We are producing oxygen gas and our material used to make the anode is carbon. So, this oxygen at anode usually reacts with the graphite to form carbon-4 oxide at high temperatures. So what will happen is, our rods will gradually eat away, and therefore we must replace them frequently. This makes the process a little expensive. Now, finally, let us indicate that the cryolite in the mixture is not used up in the process. So, the only thing that we shall keep on adding here is our molten aluminum oxide. Dear candidates, with that we've come to the end of our presentation where we have taken you through the extraction process for aluminium. We stop here, but with a promise that we shall make more videos to illustrate in simple terms the extraction process of the other remaining five metals. Thank you for being part of the team, and we take this opportunity to wish you all the best in your revision.